This is the Resilient Advisor Show with Jay Coulter. On this episode of the Resilient Advisor Show, I'm going to share three stories from recent Saturday notes. If you're feeling stuck, the story of the mason jar may be able to show you why you were feeling that way and what you can do about it. The second story is about service. Are you delivering a premium service for a premium product? My recent interactions with Uplift and Aura Ring serve as a thought experiment for how you're applying your service model in your business. And then lastly, do you really need to be taking AI seriously? A story from the 1990s may give you a different lens on artificial intelligence and its implications for your practice. I hope you enjoyed these short stories. This is an old story that I have told many of you over the years. In a remote village, Bob the farmer was known for his unique approach to agriculture. One spring, Bob decided to plant a pumpkin seed inside an old, clear glass mason jar. He watched as the pumpkin germinated and slowly began to conform to the jug's shape, its vivid orange body snugly fitting against the glass. In his vast, open fields, pumpkins could reach sizes that would astound anybody, but Bob's pumpkin, nestled within the jug, was restricted to a size dictated by its container. This soon became a village attraction, representing the subtle ways our environment shapes and limits our growth. Bob's glass encased pumpkin stood as a reminder that while potential for growth is vast, it is often the space we find ourselves in that defines its extent. At the start of 2020, I closed my office as the lockdowns were sending everybody home. It was easy when I got home. I became comfortable with the routine. I also hated it, and I was not growing. I was inside of my own mason jar. Something had to change. So this year, I rented an office suite with four offices while having zero employees. Within 45 days, the office was filled. We hired a new video editor, a banker, and an office for Chris, and an area where local clients can come in and use the space. Clients have been stopping by to visit, and I haven't been happier in a while with my work environment. All of this happened before the sign was even up on the building. Here's the takeaway. What is your mason jar? Do you have too many clients? Do you not spend enough time with the right clients? Do you need to make some changes on your staff? Do you need a new custodial firm? Let me know if you wanna talk it through, and thanks for watching. This is a story about service. If you're not familiar with the Aura Ring, it's a tool used to help measure and track some of the important health metrics such as sleep, activities such as steps, and your physical readiness. I fell in love with this ring because it gamified activity and sleep while helping me get back into shape last year. I'm flat out addicted to it, and I was recommending it to everybody I knew. Then it broke, and that happens. My service experience with the Aura Ring was awful. I sent an email about it not working. They responded one to two days later with links for troubleshooting from their website, which of course I had already been on trying to fix the ring. The links were not helpful at all. We went back and forth for weeks with a minimum of 24 hour delay in their responses. It was like they didn't even care that I was a customer. Last month, I purchased my dream desk, this Aura desk. I've wanted this stand-up desk for years. They are not cheap, and I am, but it's glorious, and I'm really glad that I purchased it. About a week after it was built, I noticed a small problem on the desktop. I was frustrated because not only was the desk new, I spent a lot of money on it, so I sent a message through the Uplift uh, service desk. Within 20 seconds, somebody answered. They asked me for a picture of what was wrong. They asked one more question. I responded. They said they would send out a replacement desk, and that replacement was in my office three days after I reported the problem. No fuss, full replacement. I will always recommend Uplift to people. Uplift has a premium customer-focused service model. Aura Ring apparently is not concerned about service, prefer, inste uh, instead preferring to scale their service. Here's the takeaway. Do you have a premium service model or are you trying to scale your service? Having an intentional approach, such as either my AB Touchpoint system or 
any system that is out there that you can stick with will make a difference. The happiest advisors that I know don't try to scale their service model. They have right-sized their business, offer a premium product with premium service. Please reach out if you'd like to discuss. This is one of my favorite stories from early in my career. It's the late 1990s. I was a rookie stockbroker in an old fashioned firm called Dean Witter. On this particular day, there was a lot of excitement in the office. Byron Ween, the legendary market strategist, was coming to town to give a presentation. All of us brokers filed into the conference room, 120 of us, coats, ties, and lots of excitement. Before Byron spoke, the branch manager got up and he said, before we get started, I have one quick announcement. Uh, our branch has been selected to be in the beta test group for email communication with our clients. There was a collective groan in the audience as the old brokers couldn't fathom the idea of speaking with their clients over email. And then the branch manager said, hopefully this will be over soon and it's just a fad. A fad, can you believe it? It obviously was not a fad. At that time, I was a young man already communicating with my friends over my personal email. Now, I don't have any data or recollection on when those old brokers eventually adopted email marketing, but you have to know that it had to slow their business down. When it comes to artificial intelligence, are you thinking like an old broker? Recently, my friend and client had a featured post on Michael Kitsis's popular Kitsis.com. The post is entitled Designing Custom GPTs with Advanced Chat GPT Features to Enhance Advisor Capabilities. If even that title turns you off, this is an article that you need to read. In the article, he lays out how to leverage AI in his practice and even shares four prompts that you could start using today. He concludes the article by saying, client satisfaction has soared as we've been able to deliver swifter, more thorough solutions. For us as financial advisors, the real magic of AI hasn't been about surpassing market performance or dissecting SEC filings. It's been about how we've been able able to partner more closely with our clients, gaining insights into their lives in waves that we were previously unfathomable. Here's the takeaway. David Ortiz is 64 years old. He's not an old broker. I hope you don't become an old broker either. Thanks for watching.